I don't think it's high enough. Me neither. So what are you doing here? Adrenaline. I just came out of rehab. It's the closest thing I get to a drug. You're in rehab? Yeah. Cool. It wasn't celebrity rehab or anything, but... That guy from American Pie was there. I love this city. Yeah. Why do you act like that? Do you do it just to antagonize people? Maybe. You really don't care what people think of you, do you? Not really. God, that's cool. Is it? Hey. Hey. What? You want to play a game? A game? Yeah. What are you, eight? Are you 78? Truth or dare? You've got to be kidding. Truth or dare? Truth. Okay, so first off, I think what we need to do is we need to see you walking in. So these, these are your marks here. So this is where you're going to be in focus, okay? So we'll have you walking in from the fire exit coming into here and then meeting. So whilst that's happening, what you, what you can do is you're setting up the scene, the given circumstances. So essentially you have a camera here mm -hmm. and a camera here, okay? So your eye line in terms of the city, you don't want to be going past here really or, or past here. So you have this kind of angle to work from. When working on camera, you should be specific with your eye lines. So don't pick too many places because it's too busy for the camera. Mm -hmm. So you pick, maybe your city eye line is there and you pick a point there and then maybe there and the same for you. Now, because we have the cameras coming from this way here, every opportunity <laughs> that you have to use the city landscape, to let the camera uh, come into your eyes and see what you're thinking is useful for us. So for example, if the um, truth or dare, and mm -hmm. it's like, oh, come on, don't be ridiculous. You can throw that look out there. Use, use the environment to help you um, let the camera come to you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So let's practice first hitting your mark. So if you took three steps back off here, one, two, three. And let's say you took three steps coming off here. One, two, three. Now just practice like looking out at the city and come and hit your mark. See if you can hit your mark in three steps. Good, have a look down. Okay, so a little bit over to the right for you, but that was pretty good, okay? Because obviously what you can't do is you can't come and be like, Okay, and perfect, and blah, blah, because yeah. that's not going to work. <laughs> so let's have, you're going to set up the idea of where you are. Remember, you're on a rooftop. Mm -hmm. So referencing how far you are down, you can do. Mm -hmm. Looking out at the cityscape, you can do. And then you're going to walk into this shot, okay? okay? What we need to work on is not saying the lines too quickly, because there's subtext underneath. There's a relationship that's already happened here, okay? So as you're walking, you can, you can notice how you walk, you hit your mark. You don't have to say anything first. Maybe look at the skyline first, then we're reconfirming, we're reaffirming your given circumstances where you are. Also, you're a long way down. You've probably got like, what, cars and traffic and people maybe. So you can have a little look down before you say, nah, I don't think it's high enough because you're perched on the edge, sitting on the edge, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that that's a, we have to connect that moment for it to make sense for you to say that. And it's a joke, I think. Yeah. I think you're making kind of a not very funny joke. Yeah, it's quite a crude joke. Yeah. So I think that there's a lot to be done before we even get into the talking of the scene. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. So let's try that again now with... Shannon, with you looking out and setting that for us first, remember, pick your eye lines 
if it's too busy, we get confused as an audience, you just pick them and then you're walking in. And I'll give you a visual cue to walk in. Okay. Is that okay? Okay, so. So let's try and pick your eye lines for you, Shannon, and action. And you can look down over the back up and action, Alex. I don't think it's high enough. Me neither. Good, so. just cut there. So you see how actually you're starting to build the world already before you even talk. It's, it's, it's different, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And that was very good on hitting your mark. So now you know you're in focus. Yep. Yeah, especially if I had a close up on you here, it's really important if I'm on here on you and you're just even a few inches off your mark, then we have a problem. So that was very good. Nice on the sight lines as well, visually understanding where you are so that we understand where you are. So if you don't understand, then we don't. And it's all connected to your imagination. Mm -hmm. You're most effective when the camera can see into your eyes, always. So when you start turning to each other, so let's just take it from a later point in the script now. Mm -hmm. But when you start turning to each other in profile and it's just profile -y, it's uh, not as good for camera. So remember when we're saying use the cityscape to help you when you have a point when you want to think about something that someone said to you and there's a beat or a moment or a shift, a unit shift in the scene, then you can use this to help bring your looks out to the camera so the camera can see what your internal conflict is and what's happening. Okay, so let's just do a section from, very good on hitting your marks with sight lines, now let's do a section from the middle of the script. Let's go from, why do you act like that? Do you do it just to antagonise people? So that's you, Shannon. Mm -hmm. So let's go from there, okay? And remember, and try and do it so that you are connecting with each other and talking to each other, but there is still the freedom to be able to look out, use the scenery, to give yourself that thinking time, to give yourself those beats, those pauses, to find the response. Okay? Happy? Yep. <laughs> Great. And action. Why do you act like that? Do you do it just to antagonize people? Maybe. You really don't care what people think of you, do you? Not really. God, that's cool. Is it? Hey. Hey. What? You wanna play a game? A game? Yeah. What are you, eight? Are you 78? Truth or dare? You've got to be Truth kidding. or dear? Truth. Tell me about the character relationship between them two. What's going on? So I guess he's of much higher status than I am, although I'm quite bold and I'm trying to push him and I know that in some way he's attracted to me, because that's happened earlier in the film, where he's suggested that by one of his lines. And you attracted to him? Yeah. So this is kind of the subtext that's happening underneath, when you're having this conversation. Yeah. There is this kind of uh, mutual attraction that's running mm. throughout. Yeah, but I guess it's just like, how far do you want me to push him? Because obviously it's quite naughty of me to be even having this interaction, given yes. our age gap and that kind of thing. How much do you want him to come to you though? Quite a lot. Quite a lot, okay. So let's do something, this, this is good. So we're working on um, subtext. Mm -hmm. So if you guys come here, let's, we're trying to work out what is not spoken, mm -hmm. okay? What's underneath, because that's the other element of uh, screen acting we need to fill that imagination. All the stuff that is unspoken has to be filled. It has to be 
rich for us to understand because we, un we know as an audience member, as a viewer, if there's a vacant moment. We know it instantly. So we have to make sure that everything is detailed and precise and specific. So for this exercise, so let's have you facing each other here, hands together, out together like this, okay? Excellent, good. So all I want you to do is, there's a few rules with this exercise. Number one is you have to be looking at each other all the time, throughout all of the dialogue. Rule number two is that you have to alternate your dialogue, obviously. So you say a line, you say a line, you say your line, you say your line, but you always have to remain looking at each other. And the idea is if you think you have higher status or if you're trying to gain power over the other person, then you can put pressure on one hand or both hands and it can be up or down. Good, so just try that, just so that you're, you understand different pressures. Yeah? And you feel it when someone else is giving you pressure and responding and how that feels, but also when you are the one who is, who is pushing. Yeah, so you're happy with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to go from the start of the script. I just want you to run through the script. And you can move, you don't have to be static at all. So you can move around with this exercise as well. Okay. But you just have to always be looking at each other, okay? Okay. Cool. Should we give it a go? Yep. Yeah. All right, great. And off we go. I don't think it's high enough. Me neither. So... What are you doing here? Adrenaline. I just got out of rehab. It's the closest thing I get to a drug. You were in rehab? Yeah. Cool. It wasn't celebrity rehab or anything, but the guy from American Pie was there. I love this city. Yeah. Why do you act like that? Do you do it just to antagonize people? Maybe. Good, and just stop there. Nice, so just come back to here. Good, so how did that feel, doing that? How did it feel when you're, be when you're being pushed? What does it feel like? It feels vulnerable. You feel vulnerable? Yeah. Exposed? Yeah. yeah. And so, and when you fight back, how does that feel? When you push when you push back, how does that feel? It took a lot for me to physically push you. <laughs> yeah. So I was really struggling to actually mm -hmm. have that intention behind it. Yeah. But when you feel like you're actually making progress, you do gain a lot of power and mm -hmm. you do feel like you're pulling back status. Yes. And I think as well, yeah, you're pulling you're owning status again and look, retaking it, reclaiming it from the other person. And it's not just about exerting your status you can consciously um sort of submit to them as well yeah 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 absolutely so we're in this or this sort of ever present always changing uh power shifts but that's all going on sort of underneath the text but we have to keep that alive all the time so when you are when you do receive a line which is for example maybe uh, why do you act like that do you do it just to antagonize people i think Shannon did with quite a strong push. So internally, you want to have that feeling of the push in here, which then brings out your response. Yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Kind yeah. of. Yeah. yeah. Yeah? So we need to understand... So these feelings that we're getting, physical reactions actually from this exercise, we need to always have underneath as subtext, as your subtext for, for the actual scene. Otherwise it becomes flat, otherwise it comes, becomes just about the lines, and it's never just about the lines. If it becomes just about the lines, we lose it in your eyes, because we know that you don't believe it. So you have to have these real, um, under the surface, physical responses that inform the line that you say. Mm -hmm. So let's try the whole scene now, with, the, with your hitting your marks as well, and understanding this idea of physically inhabiting your subtext. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. I don't think it's high enough. 
Me neither. So what are you doing here? Adrenaline. Just got out of rehab. It's the closest thing I get to a drug. You were in rehab? Yeah. Cool. It wasn't celebrity rehab or anything, but... The guy from American Pie was there. I love this city. Yeah. Why do you act like that? Do you do it just to antagonize people? Maybe. You really don't care what people think of you, do you? Not really. God, that's cool. Is it? Hey. Hey. What? You want to play a game? A game? Yeah. What are you, eight? Are you 78? Truth or dare? You've got a Truth or dare? Truth.